Hello, everybody. I don't do these much more, but this is a very, very special occasion. I swore to do very few interviews because I hate talking about wrestling. I don't want to talk about wrestling, and I'm not going to spend my time talking about wrestling. But I know with this man, we are not going to talk about wrestling. This is the third time he's been on the show. We got off to a very rocky relationship. We kind of smoothed things over in the middle. And now we, I don't know, RD, correct me if I'm wrong. We may be approaching love. Uh, I love this man, RD Reynolds. Guys, RD Reynolds is a co author of The Death of WCW and also wrestlecrap.com which has been around forever and is legendary in the business rd what's going on my friend i i'm just hanging out enjoying our love fest well Most people never, think we should just be here ready to duke it out i right, first of all bro i got a question the way you position yourself with batman 66 right over your uh, left shoulder bro oh. what, what, what am i looking at there what is that bro Oh man, after no, the other way. There we are. There we go. Now, where did you get that, bro? I have not seen that. See, look at how beautiful that oh, is. Oh, that, that is lighting. beautiful. That is beautiful. Mm hmm. They have a uh, they have a pinball machine, you know. I Batman know they 66. do. I know they do. They got uh, at the casinos too. They had the gambling machines, which I popped huge over. Correct. Yeah. yeah. I mean, people now understand the greatness. After all these years of us, people like us, opining it, I, I don't understand. The, the pinball machine's fantastic. If, if my game room wasn't uh, flooded right now, yeah. uh, I would take you in there and let you see me play. Okay, well, we, you, you, we, you, you've already created a couple of questions for me. And, and, bro, the older I get, the more ADD I get. So I got to ask you the questions immediately. I'm looking at that poster. Mm-hmm. Bro, we are talking about Julie Newmar and Yvonne Craig. We yes, are sir. talking about two absolutely beautiful, sexy women. I've, you know, RD, I went to a comic book collection in Denver. Gosh, bro, it was probably about five years ago. Bro, Julie Newmar was still gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Gorgeous, beautiful. But RD... Hypothetically, I know you're a married man. I know you're a great husband, great father. There you go, bro. But so this is all hypothetical. I'll put it to you this way, bro. You get an evening with either Yvonne Craig in her prime mm -hmm. or Julie Newmar in her prime. You get an evening to do whatever you see fit. What's, mm. what, what's the decision, bro? Um, I would probably do... Uh, I need to phrase that better. I would probably go with Julie Newmar uh, just because uh, we could talk about how she uh, assisted me through puberty, which I'm sure she would enjoy hearing. And I'm sure she's heard uh, a thousand times before from m much, much better looking, uh, uh, more enviable people than myself. RD, you, you are dead on there, bro, because, bro, how old are you? I'm 51, almost okay. 52. Well, bro, so you actually then weren't born when Batman came out, correct? Correct. It would have been, uh, that would have been correct. I would have caught it in, uh, you know, 70s reruns. Bro, as an absolute shoot to what you just said, I was five. I was five in 1966. Bro, I remember watching the very first episode. I swear to you, RD, I am not kidding you. I remember what you just said when I was five years old and I first saw Catwoman like that was the first time I looked at a like it was kind of like, wait, wait, what? What is this? Like, you, you, I, I can't put it in words. But, bro, as a shoot, I think that was the first time as a five year old boy that I looked at a girl like a girl. Right. That, that's what we uh, call here in the Reynolds household the Charo moment. <laughs> For me, it was Charo. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, Xavier Kugat, her uh, her band leader. Was it really Charo? So what was it, Charo? No, it really was Charo. I'm not making that up. On the talk shows, bro, did you see her first sure. on the talk shows, or where did you see her? 
I just remember her shaking her uh, maracas, let's <laughs> say, and then I was like, yeah, okay, I, I, I'm down with this. That's interesting, bro. I remember yeah. Charo well. She always did the talk show scene. Very, 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 very sexy, Charo. Oh, yeah. Very oh. beautiful woman. Now, you gave me a second question. You said your um, game room is over flooded. Tell me what you have in your game room right now, Arjun. No, I said my game room is flooded. Oh, it's flooded, flooded. Yes. What? Oh, I thought you meant it was flooded with too many games. No, no, no. If it was flooded with too many games, I would. Oh, I would geez. What, what, what happened, <laughs> Uh, one day I was getting uh, up and I walked uh, over to my uh, son's room and I was like, why is the floor all wet? And apparently we had a, a something wrong with the sink in this bathroom and it, it oh. flooded the upstairs. So <clears throat> it uh, has made everything a mess and we're waiting for him to come and uh, do all the repairs. So I'm sorry. Uh, but yeah, yeah. I thought nah, okay. Know. Things happen. Who cares? Insurance about uh, video games. Bro, are you a fan of the one ups? The well, I actually have a Star Wars one up, yeah. Are you a fan of it? It's fine. I mean, it's fine for what it is. I mean, I own full size arcade machines. Like I said, I have the uh, the Batman 66 pinball machine. I have six other pinball machines. They're not all at the house, though. I help a guy named um, his name's Rupert Bonham. He was on the TV show Survivor and <clears throat> he um, runs a charity called Rupert's Kids that helps. Uh, young adults that got in trouble with the law um because if you get in trouble with the law at a young age i mean it 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 sticks with you yeah, I mean, if, right, right. if anybody's ever seen the movie ant-man there's a there's a joke where uh <clears throat> you know he gets out of jail uh and he goes to work for ba baskin robbins and then he gets thrown out and they're like baskin robbins always knows and we all laugh at that, but that's actually that's actually what happens. And I had a, a friend that I had met through the Rivers Kids program, and he uh, had a job at Domino's, Domino's Pizza of all places. Uh, and they found out about his criminal background, and they they forced him to leave. Uh, so, but Rupert had come to me and he said, "Hey, um, you know, I understand because I help with a drive-in movie theaters arcade as well." And he said, "I want you to help me open an arcade." I said, okay, that's fine. I said, where do you want it? And he, he mentioned the town's called Shelbyville, Indiana. It's a very small town. I was like, man, this place is, this town's way too small to have an arcade. And he goes, no, no, it's all for charity. And so that's what we did. So a lot of my games are there. Do you have a Kiss pinball machine? Uh, we have a Kiss pinball machine at the arcade, yes. It's not mine, but we have one. Yeah, that's one thing that was always on my wish list, bro. I always wanted to get that Kiss pinball machine. Yeah, my my uh, they, that is uh, from seventy seven. We also have a Aerosmith pinball machine that's from two thousand seventeen. Oh wow, that's, I love that machine. Yeah, I've not now that machine I've not seen, bro. What would you say is your all time favorite video game on machine, and also you know through a, through a uh, you know a Nintendo or PlayStation or something like that? Uh, uh an arcade machine. It would be Pac Man. And I actually was very blessed to be able to get one a couple of years ago. Uh, somebody had, I don't even remember how we found out about it, but somebody had one in their basement uh, since 1984. Wow. And never really played it. Yeah. And I was yeah. able to go and get it, and it was just beautiful. You had that. You had a, a centipede and a frogger all sitting right next to each other, and we uh, were able to get those. Uh, console, uh, man, it, it will sound very, very strange, but uh, there was a remake of Tempest. Remember oh, Tempest? Yeah, I remember. Oh yeah, bro, I do remember Tempest. One of one of the very first arcade games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's great, great, great game. They did an update of it in 1993, and they called it Tempest 2000. Mm -hmm. And that's by all, by far my favorite. They gave mm -hmm. it like techno music and all kinds of stuff. Do you still keep up with the current? I know PS5 was the craze this Christmas. Do you still keep up with Switch and all that stuff, or have you kind of left that behind? Uh, I keep up with the Switch just because my son plays it uh, all the time. Uh, the PS5 and the Xbox uh, S series or whatever it's called. Not really, <clears throat> just enough so that if it's something where we're like, okay, we should put that down at Rupert's, I know what to go and get, but not heavily. The Switch I do because, you know, my son plays it all the time. Yeah. Now, I'm seeing you're wearing an AEW uh, well, I thought we weren't talking wrestling. Well, I, I got, I got, because well, I, I want to talk about this because of that and something I just read on Wrestle Crap. Let's send everybody over to Wrestle Crap. So, bro, are you a big AEW fan? I like AEW. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I you know, it's one of those things that I l really like AEW because I 
I like the idea behind it. Kind of a grassroots movement type of thing. I remember I went to the uh, first, um, went to the uh, first, uh, whatever it was, all out or all, all in, out, or whatever think, it was. Yeah, all in, I think. Yeah, it was in Chicago, and and uh, they they asked me to go up and and talk with Bischoff, and I don't even remember who, uh, Dave Penzer and uh, Kevin Sullivan. Kevin Sullivan, super nice guy. Yeah, uh, but. Um, I went up there and I, I watched that show and I watched those people and I was like, these people are just starved. You have a, a group of wrestling fans that are starved for a different product. Mm -hmm. I don't even know. There are times where I'm like, this this show is is good. I really enjoy it. And there are times where I think, man, this show's great. And there are times I think, man, you know, this show's okay. Uh, but I think it's just because people are so starved. They want something different than than the the homogenized uh, product that the, the WWE has been uh, doing for so many years. So I think I, I'm I'm a I'm a fan of I'm a fan of the product, but I think I'm more a fan of the the idea behind the product. If that makes sense, the, you know, let's let's get this grassroots movement. Let's see this actually work. Let's see this actually succeed, uh, and just force change. Well, you know, RD, I'm going to we're not really talking about wrestling here because to me it's it's really the business side of it, okay? And RD, listen again, going back to the the death of WCW book. Mm -hmm. I I think a lot of heat, you know, I got from a certain audience over my WCW years and it brings us to AEW. That's why I'm 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 bringing this up. Bro, when when I grew up on wrestling, you and I talked about this. I grew up on Vince Sr., WWWF. That's what I grew up on. And, bro, I remember, you know, my very first interview, I was influenced by the Valiants and Captain Lou. Mm -hmm. so, bro, ever since that, and that, that was the first thing I saw, bro, when I saw wrestling, the three of them. I saw that picture as a kid. So, bro, being where I grew up and what I grew up on, I was influenced through the entertainment aspect. Correct. For some reason, RD, like early on, like I, I knew wrestling was worked. I, I knew I knew all that. But to me, the performers were larger than life. The entertainment aspect. That's what hooked me. Right. So when I started writing for the WWE and the same thing for the WCW, and this is really more business, I knew, bro, that we had the wrestling fans. The wrestling fans were watching the show. They're wrestling fans, so they're going to watch WWE. They're going to watch WCW, and no matter how bad it is, they'll bitch and complain about it. And then they'll be there the next week. So my 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 point is, from a business point of view, you know you got those people. But now the trick is expanding that audience. You've got to get people that, that aren't diehard wrestling fans, maybe borderline wrestling fans, maybe casual wrestling fans, maybe casual television viewers. You've got to get them to watch your product. And how you do that is through entertainment. Because if they like the wrestling, they would watch the wrestling. But if they don't like the wrestling, you got to get them with everything else in between. So, you know, my focus was really on how do we get the casual fan? And because we targeted that audience, that's why the numbers grew. So now when I sit back and I watch AEW, Bro, it's what you said. I have never seen a more devoted fan base like these people. Bro, I, I say this all the time. Cody Rhodes could take a dump in the middle of the ring and they gave him a standing mm -hmm. ovation. And, bro, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. to, to have fans that devote, devoted is freaking awesome. They will live and die by this product. I, I've never seen a fan base like it. But now as I'm watching this over about 15 months, my whole thing is, guys, you're going to have to expand the audience. I right. mean, for any business, the more customers, the more money you're going to make. But and I know that I'm talking about, but I'm going to let you talk as soon as I lay all this out. But then I look at it, RD, and I'm like, bro, the difference here, I think, is. I don't know if money's really a factor. You know, Tony Khan, bro, he, him and his dad are, are billionaires. 
you know he loves doing this. He was booking as a kid. Now he's booking a wrestling company. So, like, I, I'm saying, I'm trying to justify why they aren't trying to grow the audience. And then I'm like, bro, maybe money isn't a factor here. And that's why I can't grasp it. Because all the years I worked with Vince, bro, he was always motivated by money. Like, right. he never had enough money. So how, how do you feel about that, bro? Do they, do you think they need to expand that base or does it not matter to them because money isn't a factor? What, what do you think? Two things. The first thing I want to mention is you'd mentioned Cody and, and how devoted those people are to him. I took my son to his first ever wrestling show. It was an AEW show last year. And we're there and they, they, film dynamite and then afterwards they would film extra matches for AEW dark or whatever and so i said to him i said uh, it, it was a school night so i was like you know we should really go ahead and head out and he was like no that's fine Let, let's go dad and so we're leaving and we're walking past several people and cody's music hits and you know this is after the show it's not televised anything and I literally had someone grab me and say, dude, what are you doing? You're leaving? <laughs> it's Cody. He literally said, it's Cody. And I was like, yeah, I know. It's, it's <laughs> great. Right, right. So my son's got school in the morning. I got I to gotta get home. <laughs> and so, I, I, you know, and then Cody came out and he did a thank you promo or whatever. And, you know, it, you know, uh, great for him. The, the, the thing that I think has AEW in kind of a kind of a interesting position is I agree they need to they need to try and figure out ways to get uh, more eyes on the product. Mm -hmm. So the, the, I think the big thing is they need to figure out a way so that people if someone says I'm watching AEW, people know what it is mm -hmm. because you know AEW people people aren't going to know you know it's always WWE. They need to figure that out. The other thing that they really have to, in the, the thing where I say they're, they're kind of in a conundrum, is they have a fan base that doesn't want, I, I think largely does not want an entertainment product. And, and, so, and, and does not want that fan base. Like, bro, I'm the kind of guy like, you know, RD, if I watch a new television show, whole, you know, and it, it, it's, a, it's, it's the world's best kept secret. If I enjoy that show, I want to share it with everybody because right. I want everybody to watch this show. I get with this fan base, like it's kind of like they got a little club and it's exclusive and like, they don't, they don't want us in. And like, bro, I, I kind of understand that. I just don't think it's good for business, but go, go ahead. RD. Well, I, I, they, have, they have to come up with something. And I think the things they have tried like they tried to bring in, you know, Tyson to get eyes. They tried to bring in Shaq to get eyes. It's a really tough thing because the question is, what if you're bringing in a celebrity? And and I'm not. There have been a, some bad celebrities in wrestling. There have been some good celebrities in wrestling. The thing is, if you're going to try and bring in a celebrity, and, and you, 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 first of all, you don't ask me. I'm out of the target demo. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, my opinion doesn't really count. Uh, and that was something, uh, when I turned 50, uh, as first thing I looked at my wife, I go, man, I don't count anymore. I'm out of the target demo. Right. But, but the thing is you have to figure out, okay, who is a celebrity to these people? Cause I think you really do need a celebrity. You need to, you know, like, you know, uh, Tyson and Austin and Vince. I mean, you, you have to bring in something where you're going to get those extra eyes. I don't know who it is. I don't think it's Mike Tyson. Uh, you know, I don't think it's, it's Shaq. I think it has to be somebody else in, in, I don't know. I don't know who that is, but I think you really do, do need a, some kind of celebrity to, to get interest. And so people will go, Oh man, I watched AEW. The other thing is you really have to, whenever you're presenting one of these shows, if you're getting those extra eyes on it, you have to show this is why we are different. You have to put out your strongest, absolute best product but to a casual fan, I don't know, and I absolutely love watching the Young Bucks. I love watching Kenny Omega. I, as a wrestling fan, I love that. I don't know if that is gonna, if that's really gonna 
get the people, I think, maybe, I don't know. But but the, the question is, how do you get those eyes in the first place? I mean, they've been hovering at, you know, 800,000, 900,000 fans. That's great uh, for them for a startup. Uh, and they're, and they're uh, you know, the, the prime demographic or whatever it is that they're looking for is is really, really good. Again, that's great. But how, how do you grow that? And how do you grow that in today's environment where I can't, you know, I, the other, you know, we, we used to go to the, to the movies and I would have to drag my son to the movies. He didn't want to go to the movies because it's like, oh my gosh, that's two and a half hours. Yeah. You're trying to get the, this younger audience to invest that amount of time on a, on a scheduled basis. I think it's, I think that's a really, that's a really tough ask. And I don't know exactly how you accomplish that. Yeah. How do you feel about the money aspect of it, bro? Because you you have a guy, bro, that clearly money is not a motivator. I, I mean, clearly it's, it's you know, you got to keep in mind when you go back to the roots of Vince McMahon, bro, mm-hmm. say whatever you want about Vince McMahon. When he took this company from his dad, bro, Vince McMahon mortgaged everything. He had right. everything to lose, everything. So, you know, so off the bat, money mattered, you know, whether it was going to make him or break him. But, bro, if you've got a Tony Khan that is a billionaire and has the Jacksonville Jaguars and his, you know, uh, soccer league, and money really isn't a factor, I, I don't know, bro. Is it fine the way he's running it then? Because worst case scenario, this is what I say too, RD. We know the networks are all about numbers. Mm-hmm. But, bro, let's face it. Tony Khan can pay TNT to keep that show on the network. So my, my thing is, if he isn't motivated by the money and he loves booking this little territory, what's motivating him? I think it's. I, I honestly think it's that he he wants to. He wants to. It's funny because I, you know, I, I don't really talk to anybody in AEW, but at that first Starcast, uh, I actually talked with Matt Jackson, and he and I, we were just in the hotel lobby, and I was like, "Man, you guys are doing the show. You know, you got ten thousand people here." And I said, "You know, this this industry." I said, "You're you're you're doing something where you're trying to change the industry." And I said, I think that's really, really cool. I, I, that's when things happen in wrestling is when someone takes it and they change it. You, if you keep trying to do the same thing over and over and over, it's never going to change. And he was like, well, you know, I, I hope we succeed. He seemed like a very humble guy. I don't I don't know him. You know, I met him that day. But I think that it may be something where, you know, if Tony Khan is a wrestling fan, which he is. And you have all these guys that are wrestling fans. That's that's their big thing. They want it to be, they want to reinvent the business. And I think that when they do that, I think that can be a very strong motivator. And I think that at the end of the day, Tony Khan wants to, he wants to top Vince McMahon. I mean, it, it, you don't, if you're buying a football team and you're buying a soccer team and whatever else, you're not buying them so you can say, okay, yeah, cool. I got a, I got a football team. I got a, you know, you want that team to succeed. Now, thankfully, the Jaguars haven't this year, and hopefully next Sunday they won't either, and the Colts can squeak in the playoffs. That would be awesome. Mm-hmm. But it, I think it's something where it is a the motivation uh, for Tony Khan is he he wants he wants to see this thing succeed. He wants to reinvent the business. He wants it to give a product where it's going to grow wrestling and it's not just going to keep stagnating as it has. Okay. That would be my guess. I don't know that it's money, but yeah. Enough wrestling. Yeah. What are we talking wrestling for? I want to talk life with my yeah. friend RD. Now yeah. you said you're 51 or 52. Uh, I will be 52 in January. I want to talk to you about this. Okay. Did you feel a change mentally, psychologically, spiritually when you turn 50 did 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 something click with the big 50 no not really no and <laughs> not really i mean I, I i feel a little um like i'm not as limber as i used to be <laughs> <laughs> but no i mean a, a lot of it i mean it, it changed for me uh it, it just changed me when i had my kid I mean, that changed uh, whenever I decided that, uh, you know, I needed to give my life uh, to God. 
Uh, that absolutely changed. And I think that's more and more and more. Um, that's been the hardest thing about the pandemic for me is I can't go to church. I used to, uh, you know, I was che- teaching kindergarten every single Sunday for years and years and years and years. And then the pandemic hits and you can't really go and do that. And then it, it just makes it really, really difficult. Uh, but yeah, that was my big change. The other big change is, I mean, you get to a point in life and you're like, you you read something uh, on the internet about yourself or you, you see something, uh, someone at your work says something negative to you, it, whatever you have, all, you're always going to have critics. Uh, and at the end of the day, you just kind of go, well, yeah, but I still get to go home to my family. I'm very blessed with that. I still get to go home and see my wife. I still get to go home and see my son. I still get to, you know, do these cool things, things I've never should ever have been able, you know, if you said, Hey, you're going to, you know, you're going to get to, you know, do this wrestling stuff. You're going to get to go, uh, you know, have an arcade, all this stuff that I would have never imagined possible. So I always just look at it and think, man, you're the most best blessed guy alive. <laughs> what do you have to complain about there? The, you, 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 know, you said something interesting there. I get the feeling that critics, mm-hmm. I get the feeling that they don't, bother you at all i i I just you're very happy go lucky i think that's why you and i got off to a rocky start i'll tell you exactly why and i've learned this about you after that okay Mm -hmm. when we had our first interview and it was really about the death of wcw and i gotta tell you rd this is what blows my mind and this is kind of what i was getting at bro i'm gonna be 60 in a couple of weeks Mm -hmm. and my entire mindset has changed because now i'm really looking at okay bro how many years you got left? Like, right. l- like 75. Let's look at 75. Bro, you're talking about 15 years. So now I'm going to be very selective about the, what I'm doing with my time, the things that matter, the things that don't matter, you know, talking about wrestling and all that stuff. But I think we got off to a rock, rocky start. And what I was going to say is, bro, wh- when, when did we do that first interview? Three years ago? Dude, I don't even remember. It was no, it was longer ago than that. No, I know because this is the thing that blows me away, and this is what I'm trying to get across to you. I remember doing that interview with you, and bro, I was an idiot and a douche, and I re I really got upset. And I'll tell you the reason why I got upset was when I was getting upset. You were laughing and smiling like you are now. That's you, though. Like, I, I thought you were laughing at me. And the more you were that way, the hotter I was. It wasn't even about the death of WCW. I'm like, this guy's, like, laughing in my freaking face. And then I learned, no, bro, that's your personality. Yep. But my point is, bro, I swear to God, I look back now on that first interview and the death of WCW, which, like you said, three, four years ago. And here I am today, and I'm like, what am I freaking kidding? Like, I could care less about that today. Right. But back then, it was like it was really, really a big deal. But, bro, that's what I'm finding as I approach 60 Bro, I'm really looking at the time left Mm -hmm. and how am I going to spend that time? What am I going to do? You know, who am I going to have an influence on? Who am I going to have? And um, it's it's weird. It didn't happen at 50, but now, like, my entire perspective. Then we hear about a guy like Brody Lee. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -mm -mm. And it's like, ah, bro, Bro, do you ever deal with your own immortality? I, you know, I always look at it and it's like, <clears throat> my dad lived, uh, had cancer. He died at 60. Uh, my mom had dementia and her brain left her at like 65. Wow. And, you know, it's really strange. And you sit there and go, oh man, you know, I, I don't have many years left. And I think about my grandfather. He lived to be 91. You don't know. Uh, as I tell everybody, every day is a blessing. Uh, you don't, you, none of us are promised anything. Uh, and I think that's probably, you know, why I, I kind of try not to take anything too, too to heart and too critical, uh, because you're always going to have critics and those critics, even if, um, even if you have someone on, I always think of it like the death penalty or, or abortion or something, you know, people are very rooted in how they believe 
certain things to be. And it's not like if you and I were arguing about the death penalty, you're going to come up with some thing that I had not thought of and gone, wow, you know what? I hadn't thought about that. No, I mean, even, even if it was something that I hadn't thought about or someone else hadn't thought about, they may be so rooted in their belief that it's going to, you're not going to be able to change their minds. So what's the point? Why, why argue about it? Why get all upset? Why well, anything? And honestly, it was a wrestling company for 20 years ago. Who cares? It's long gone. Oh my gosh. You know, if you would have only done this, that wrestling company would still be in business. Well, maybe it would. May it would. Who cares? Right. It's a wrestling company. It's entertainment. At the end of the day, that's all it is. It's all entertainment. You know, even you and I talking right now, it's just, you know, we're just, it's just, you know, two friends talking. We're just talking and trying to make each other laugh and smile and, and think. And that's, that's all it is. And, and it, it, the more people you can have like that, the, the better your life's going to be. Yeah, yeah. You know what I've learned? And I know you, you have also, bro. What, what, what I've really learned during life is in my younger years, bro, I can go through my twenties, thirties, forties. And now as you get older, bro, the things that at one time meant everything to you, like now mean nothing. Right. And things that meant nothing mean everything. And bro, like that's what I try to tell people, you know, RD, I've got a show called castrating the marks mm -hmm. and what, what bro, there is zero hatred involved in that show. I do not hate any of these guys. First of all, it's wrestling. Mm -hmm. Se second of all, I don't know them personally you know, third of all, I know their fathers, dads, husbands, etc. I don't hate these people. Right. What I tried to do with the this show is because a lot of these guys are our age. Mm -hmm. Okay. And oh, yeah. based on my experience, I'm trying to say through humor, guys, listen to yourself. It's not that important. It's it's wrestling. It's a form of entertainment. It's you don't live and die. And bro, I'm trying to tell them this like based on my experience because RD, bro, I missed those little league games when I was the at the WWE. I put my family at, on the back burner when I worked for Vince. That's what I did. And I look back now and I'm like, what were you thinking? What what was going through your mind? So as I learn, I'm, I'm trying to get a point across through entertainment. Like, guys, wake up. It's not that important. But I, I don't know what it is about wrestling media because – Bro, you don't consider yourself wrestling media, do you? Oh, my God. Okay. I, I consider myself wrestling media just like my hero Bobby Heenan considered himself a broadcast journalist. Okay, yeah. thank you very much. Okay, yeah, I don't consider you in that vein either. But, man, there's just something about these guys, and we spoke about it a little bit publicly, where, God, bro, they just take this wrestling so seriously. And, guys, it's two, guys, it's two men faking a fight. I mean, that's what we're really – talking about here but i could never understand the level of seriousness bro when, when it's about business i i love talking about the business of wrestling i could right. talk about the business all day long i'm very intrigued in that bro the politics the positioning you know i i love all that stuff because bro that relates to any any job or yep. any absolutely industry. it relates to baseball football you name it but yep. when we're talking about the actual product on the television, bro, to me, it's no different than watching any other show. Right. Yep. No, but but people get really like they get really upset about that as well. It's kind of like I have a friend. I, I love him to death. Uh, but he always wants me to category. He always wants me to put in a list. Like if I go see a new uh, Marvel movie. Okay, well, where, where you know, how would you rank those movies? <laughs> I'm just like, I don't, I don't do that. It, it, to me, I, it's funny because lists and stuff. I mean, we, you know, Blade and I actually did a book, you know, the Russell Crowe book, a list where we mocked that whole idea. Some of the lists were one thing. I mean, it, it was something that the whole idea of of trying to say, okay, 
you know, let's rank those Star Wars films in order, you know, best to worst. And I'm just like, what for, for what? <laughs> you know, I, I just I have never quite understood that. It's but yeah, I have a buddy that he always does that. Well, where would you where would you rank this one? I don't know. I don't really think about it. I watched it, I enjoyed it. You know, yeah. maybe I'll watch it again and maybe I'll enjoy it again, or maybe I'll enjoy it less. I don't know. Yeah. But it's just something to me. I just want I just want to be entertained. I just want to be amused. Now, bro, talk to me about uh wrestle crap because mm-hmm. bro, how long has that been around, man? Yep, uh April first, uh two thousand is when we oh launched. So it's been 20 years. Holy, so you just had a 20 year anniversary. Yes. Yep, and I have been doing uh wrestle crap radio now for 15 years. Now, so let me, 15 years of podcasting. Now, RD, let me ask you this, because I'm asking this as, as it um, relates to me. Is it getting more difficult for you? Because, you know, bro, when you first started this baby, you know, all your heart and souls into this, then it takes off. Then it becomes world renowned. Everybody knows about it. But now 20 years in, you know, you turning 50, you know, yeah. other inch- is it, is it more difficult with you? Like it is very difficult for me to talk about wrestling. It, mm-hmm. it, it really, really is. Is it difficult for you? And how do you cope with that? How do you handle that? Well, I, I mean, it, it's difficult because, um, because you have 20 years of doing it behind you. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so it it's kind of like, you know, it, how many different ways, you know, especially for you. I, I look at the, the likes of you, know, you and, and Eric and Bruce and, and everybody else. And it's like, how many different times can you tell the story? Right. You know, right. Oh, let's let's talk about David Arquette again. Oh, right. let's talk about whatever. Let's Absolutely. talk about right. the people. how many times, how many different times could you do that? And I remember when Bobby Heenan was alive and, and I, I was able to meet Bobby and he was, oh, he was just, he was just a gem to me. He was just so, so sweet. And they always said, don't meet your heroes, but I was always glad I met him. Yeah. But he would, I would hear his, you know, his interviews that he would do. And I would hear the same stories over and over and over. And I'd be like, man, there's gotta be, there's gotta be more. But when you think about it, okay especially you in, in WCW or whatever, you, you were there for, uh, you know, a few, uh, you know, a, a year or whatever, a couple different stints in there. But, I mean, realistically, how much time and how many different ways can you tell the same story? Right. With Wrestle Crap, it's a little different because I'm always, like, di- you, know, uh, you know, trying to find different things to write about or different things to, to talk about. Um you know, and 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 the radio, sh- the, the the podcast. I still call it a radio show because whenever we started Russell Grab Radio, there was they didn't call it podcast. We right. just called it an audio show. Right. Uh, so with that, it's not as difficult. We're always just you know covering okay whatever. Uh, we always try and find the most obscure news we can. You know, uh, usually Marty Janetti's good for a laugh or two. Uh, but you know, other than that, I mean, it's really nothing that. Um, it, it, it is difficult because you just you kind of run out of stuff. But it's a job. Is that how you handle it? Pretty much. Do you handle it as this is a job? I, I try not to, but uh, in some ways it is because I look at it and say, okay, it's the the end of the month's coming. I have got to get this show because you know we have patrons, uh, thankfully right. on our Patreon that are saying, okay, you know we're going to pay. You know we're going to give you guys this much, but yet at the end of each month, you know each month we need to have. Uh, two audio shows. Uh, and so we're always sitting there, you know, usually by about the 20th of the month, I'm always played. Come on, we got it. We got to get this done. We got to get this done. I, yeah. I don't want to go to, you know, the, you know, the 30th of the month or whatever. So in some ways it is a job, but uh, I still generally enjoy talking about wrestling. Um, sometimes it's difficult uh, just because of time, because you, it's like, okay, well, I can either write about this horrible wrestling movie that I found from, you know, starring, uh, you know, a Mexican luchador from 1965, or I can go hang out with my kid and play Pikmin. You know, it's right. yeah. makes it, it, that's where it really comes yeah. to. I had a pop when I looked at, uh, I, I was checking out Wrestle Crap, bro. Bro, every time he's on my television sing, uh, screen, I am yelling at my TV, bro, please put your tongue back in your mouth. You you look freaking ridiculous. 
please put your tongue. What are you doing? And I saw on WrestleCrap, Sammy Guevara got his tongue. <laughs> and I'm like, I told you, bro. Did I not tell you to come back? Keep your tongue in your mouth. <laughs> That, that, that is one of the things that is a is a kind of double edged sword about AEW. Is that you have you have all these young guys, and I mean that's it's, it's kind of cool because you see all these young people that you 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 would have never seen in wrestling before, you know, <laughs> before AEW. But in some ways, you're like, okay, there's certain things that <laughs> I'm like. I look at Sammy. I'm like, bro, did did you not see that that didn't work out too well for Miley Cyrus and Miley? <laughs> Even Miley kind of out, put your tongue back in your mouth, please. All right, let's switch to a, a topic I always love talking about. And, and you hit upon it earlier, and I want to dig into it a little bit more. Bro, I I love, not only that I love it, I honestly, you know, RD, when I was in the wrestling business for all those years, there was a, to- a, a good portion of that time. Really, bro, after WC, after WWE. Once I left WWE from like, bro, 1999 to when I finally left in 2012, it was not fun for me. Mm-hmm. It just wasn't RD and, and it was a job. And, you know, listen, I had to take into consideration what I was being paid. Right. How would I be able to find something like that? But, bro, it was it was not a it was not a fun experience for me. And. I remember when I became a Christian, bro, um, I remember I constantly, God, wh- why why here? Like, wh- why am I here? Why did you put me here? What is it that you want me to be doing? And I, I got to tell you, RD, for a while, I thought, well, maybe he wants me to spread his word within the wrestling community and the wrestling boundaries. And I really made an effort to do that. Mm-hmm. But RD, like I learned quickly, nah, that's not what it is. Because I have many times, even when I was in the business, bro, I would refer to wrestling as the devil's playground. I, I mean, I, I just would when I was in the business and the stuff I saw and the people involved and the politics and the greed and the money and the backstabbing and that underbelly that not a lot of people discuss. I experienced that and I was never that guy and I never wanted to be that guy. So I used to struggle with God all the time. W- why do you have me here of all places? And RD, like, Again, this is where I wasn't all in because I kn- I got to the point that I knew God didn't want me there. RD, I would be in my hotel room on my knees. A couple of times I drove myself to tears because my worry always was, how are you going to support your family? Yep, And that's what I would say to God. God, I I know you don't want me here. I know you have other plans for me. I know there are other things you want me to do. How am I going to support my family? Because I was scared to death. It was never RD about how much money I made. It was taking care of my family. That's what it was all about. And RD, I mean, to make a long story short, um, and I've gone into this many times, but one day I was having a very bad day at work and I, I managed to get everybody out of the conference room and I locked the door and I got my Bible out of my case because I needed to center myself. Like every time when I'm, I, I give me that word, I'm going to center myself. RD true story. So bro, I'm in the word And while I'm in the word, getting calm, you know, getting things back under control, bro, I reach in my pocket and I take out a pack of gum. You know, you know that they have the square packs of gum that falls over. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. RD, right hand to God. I reached in my pocket, open up the gum. Two brand new off the mint $50 $50 bills drop out of my gum. What? 
are the I walk around with them to this day in my pocket. Mm -hmm. Crisp off the press. RD, you got to understand, I never have money in my pocket. When I was on the road, everything was credit card. Right. I never had money in my pocket. So, of course, I call my wife. Did you? She goes, no, I don't. I, I didn't take, take out any money and put any money in your gum. Mm -hmm. So it's like, RD, when this money fell out of my gum, at that point, I knew Bro, either he has now shown me, don't worry about money. I've been right. trying to tell you, I know what you need. Do not worry about money. When that happened to me, I was like, bro, if I don't quit now, I might as well spit in God's face. Because right. I mean, he could not be any more clearer than this. Bro, that's, that's when I left TNA. Mm -hmm. It was 2012, and that's when I'm like, Okay, I've got to give it up. I've mm -hmm. I've got to trust. I've got to have faith. He cannot show me any more clearer than this. So now, RD, once a week since I started Pyro and Value like six years ago, bro, I do a show called That's Life. Mm -hmm. And what I do is I I talk about life and I talk about God, but I kind of go in through the back door. I don't hit people over the head with Bible verses and this and that. I talk about God from a very realistic point of view. And every time I do the show, I say a little prayer to God. God, I am just a vessel. Right. Vince Russo was talked through me. What, whatever you want to get. If you want to get across to one person, whatever it is, use me and talk through me. And I do this show every week. I just did it before we come on here. I do it every Tuesday. But RD now when I look back on the question, God, why am I here? What do you now? I put the pieces together mm -hmm. and I think it was the opportunity for me to get some name recognition for people to know who Vince Russo was for people to, for Vince Russo to have some kind of a following. So now I can spread God's word in 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 a language that people might understand if if they're fans of mine but rd i got to tell you this and i want to know if you experience this cuz i know you've uh, you've given a lot of uh, you donated a lot of your life to god and teaching the kids but first of all you said earlier in the show when i made the decision t tell me what happened with you i i want to hear what happened with you in that instance <clears throat> well i mean I had given my life to God, uh, you know, uh, when I was in high school and, but it wasn't, you know, it was, I remember it very clearly. It was a neighboring town. It was a church. I was, uh, at a very low point in my life and I just, God, just take me, do with me what you will. Um, but it was really <clears throat> something that it was, but it was always kind of at, at a distance. Uh, but when I got older uh, and I found a church that I uh, really, really appreciate, and I'm very, very blessed to have found this church. Um, it's just a community church, you know, uh, non-denominational, and, and they are the like the most laid back church I had ever seen. Um, when Peyton Manning was in his prime, I mean, you would have more people coming in in Colts jerseys than you would in suits and ties. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and it was it just a wonderful church. Uh, pastor there uh, was was just awesome. I just heard his word, and I was like, you know what? I am going to be baptized. I was never baptized, um, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go do this. Uh, and when I got baptized, I was just like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna really get in. I'm gonna read the Bible constantly. I read the Bible from you know Genesis, you know, all the way uh, all the way to the end. Um, and I, uh, to Revelation, sorry, brain fade. Uh, but I mean, I, I mean, it was something I was going to do that. And I um, was just like, I'm going to do this. And so now it's interesting, uh, you know, I don't use a physical Bible anymore. I actually have it on my iPad and it keeps track like every single day. And as I find that to be a great motivator to stay in the word. Uh, and I, I make sure every single day, actually, before I even get out of bed, I, and this is what I tell the kids, 
you know, every day before you let your feet hit the floor. And I have to be really careful about saying that because sometimes you have a, a child that's in a wheelchair or something. So you got to be really careful. But I always tell the kids, you know, every day before your feet hit the floor, what you should do is you should just, you just, just say a, a quick prayer. Thank you, God, for getting me out of bed today. Thank you, God, for giving, you know, check, check all your senses. Do you, can you smell? You know, can you see? Can you hear? Can you taste? Or, or you got your sense of feeling? If you got all those, you're so far ahead. <laughs> I mean, it's a blessing. And God has given you another day uh, with which you can do something. And that has always been, you know, always tell those kids, don't let your feet hit the floor before you pray. And then personally, I am always like, okay, I'm not going to let my feet hit the floor. I'm going to grab my iPad. I'm not going to, I mean, leave airplane mode on. So I'm not getting interrupted or anything else. And I just read a, a you know, a chapter of the Bible uh, before I let my feet hit the floor. That's why I always tell those kids. And ever since I did that, I mean, it's just, I've always kind of been that kind of have, you know, don't let things get to you, but it, it's really helped. Uh, to ground me. And there is more important things in life uh, than, you know, even the other day when I walked out and, you know, well, why is my, why is, why are my feet wet? You know, <laughs> what, what, what's this about? You know, I didn't really get angry about it. I mean, I mean, I you got a little angry at the time, but I mean, it didn't last because, you know, whatever, who cares? It's a little bit of water. Uh, nothing majorly bad happened. And even if something majorly bad happens, you know, my dad got cancer. It's it, it, whatever it was in his mid fifties. Uh, and he didn't live to see his 61st birthday. I mean, that's something I could get really angry about, but I don't because I think, okay, it was really cool that I got to know my dad all those years. And he was, he is a million times better person than I will ever be. But I mean, it was really cool, and and I get the opportunity to go and do different things. Like I said, you can open the arcade, talk talk to Vince Russo. I mean, if somebody had said to me, you know, uh, whenever, um, you know, uh, in in during the Attitude Era when I was, you know, just watching or, you know, and and knew the first time I knew of you, um, you know, you're going to be talking to to Vince Russo. I'd be like. Like a signing or something, you know. I mean, that's what I would have thought. <laughs> Same thing with Bischoff or any anybody else. And and it's to me, it's it's just something cool. And and the, the more that you can accept whatever God is giving you, whatever God is giving you, and it may not be something cool like you know getting to do this. It may be something. Hey, I got out of bed this morning. I rolled over, and my wife was there. Or maybe it's, hey, I got out of bed this morning. I get to go and I get to go to a job and I am going to get paid. I get to keep a roof over my head. That's stuff that God's giving you. I mean, Artie Reynolds didn't do any of this stuff. I mean, that's all just God's blessings. Yeah. That's what I try to tell people. It God, it took me so long to understand this. But the to me, the meaning of life is to solidify that relationship with God every single day mm -hmm. and to, it is the journey of why did you create me? Why did you put me here? What am I supposed to be doing that only I can do to glorify you and glorify your kingdom? I tell people this all the time, you know, RD, it could be one person you meet in a two minute conversation. Right. You know, it, it could. And that's why I even when I meet strangers, that's always in the back of my mind. Is this the one that God has put before me? That's how my mind always thinks. And to me, man, what, once you're on this journey and, and that is what you're seeking, everything just makes sense. And th there's just an understanding to everything. And it's like you said, am I going to let a flood upset me. You know, I mean, it, it just gives you such a different perspective, but I got to tell you, man, I honestly feel because I am so open about, you know, my love for God. And that's part of what I do now. And I will do that's life till the day I die. But I got to tell you with that RD, I feel like that there's always such an attack. And, and, and I think the personal attack is supposed to be well, if we kill Vince's credibility, if we right. make Vince out to be a liar, then everything he's saying about God has to be a lie. Like, I, I always feel that that is what I am always up against. 
there's always, you know, uh, you know, he who is without sin cast the first stone, you know, yeah, because there's none of us that are without sin. Trust me, you go into my, the, you know, if you want to dig, I'm sure you find something on me. You find something on Vince. You find something on anybody. And I mean, it's to me, that's the beauty of Christ, right? <laughs> it's that we're all forgiven. No uh, matter if we're I mean, if that, some, yeah, the, that that's the thing, RD, like with people all the time. Oh, yeah, Vince is a great Christian. He said this, he said this. He, and I'm like, don't you get it? The fact that I'm saying those things and I am a, a, a sinner and I fall short is the reason why yeah. I need Jesus. And bro, these people that, oh, bro, I'm a Christian, so now I'm the person perfect guy and no it's the exact opposite we are all sinners that's why we made those mistakes that is why we need god's love and guidance sometimes i wonder though rd do people just say that to take the shot at you they they have to understand that there is no perfect male or female walking around on this planet Right. Well, I mean, it just shows a, you know, and it's not a knock against them per se, but I mean, it's something that they don't understand. I mean, that's what, you know, uh, Christianity is all about is that we fall short of God. It doesn't matter what we do. Mother Teresa fell short of God too. It doesn't matter. Everybody falls short of God. God's holy. Uh, and you, you're not, we're not holy. We're no one is, and you can try and be as good uh, a Christian. And that's one of the things I pray every day on my way to work. You know, God help me to be a good Christian, help me to help people. But at the end of the day, I am going to fall short. Yep. I am going to do things where I was like, ah, oh, I really shouldn't have said that to that person. I should have been nicer to this person. I should have done whatever. I shouldn't have said this. I shouldn't have said that. Yep. Um, but that's the beauty. Uh, that's the beauty of, of salvation through Jesus Christ is you, you acknowledge that and God acknowledges it too. You know, you're not you're not going to make it. You you don't make it to heaven with by your whatever you're trying to do that's good, uh, because uh, it's not going to be good enough. And I, you know, I fall short. You fall short. And and the people that are are casting the stones, they're falling short too. You know, mm-hmm. and I pray for them that you know, hopefully, you know, one day they'll be able to 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 see the beauty of God, um, uh, and and just what uh, He has given us through His Son. Yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. I want to wrap it up with everything that you're doing. I want to I want to get that because they'll, they'll, they'll always remember the last thing. So that's what mm-hmm. we're going to talk about now, bro. Let me ask you about death of WCW is it, there was a revision like a couple of years ago, right? Yes. Yeah, five years ago. Is there plans for another one? Is it on some kind of like every five years? No, I'm, I'm being serious. No, I, no, I'm, 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 I'm is, serious. Is there too. plans for another one? That I, I, you know what? Every once in a while, you know, Brian and I will talk about it. And it's like, how many times can we go back and, you know, and kind of rehash this again? It's what we were talking about earlier. How many times do people want to hear the same story? I guess, you know, and, and I even made a joke in the, in the, in the 10th anniversary edition. I said, you know, uh, when we do our 20th anniversary edition and it's digitally implanted into your brain, uh, cause we should have that technology by then, you know, right. but I, I don't know. I mean, it's it's something we have always kicked around and uh, in, in in the tenth anniversary we we kicked around doing a a death of uh, TNA Impact book, but they're still around, so you can't really <laughs> you can't really do <laughs> the it. Near like, death, the near death, the near death, the near death of <laughs> TNA. Yeah, but it, you know, it's also something you sit there and go, okay. It's really, and you've done two of them. You know this for a fact too. It, yeah. Writing a book is not an easy thing. It's not it something you just go, not. okay, I'm just going to sit uh, down. It is not. It a is couple not. hours, you know, a night for the next week, and I'm going to have the it's book insane. done. Yeah. Um, it, and we kind of looked at it and said, okay, if we did that Death of TNA book, is is there an audience for it? Is anybody going to buy it? And we really were like, nah, probably not. You know, it, it's it's probably not worth it. As far as another uh, Death of TNA or another Death of WCW. I don't know if if I do, uh, if we were to do it, and I 
it's so funny because people always say this. Well, why didn't you talk to the people there? And it's like, well, if you read, especially the 10th anniversary, you'll see, hey, we did talk to a lot of people there. Uh, and and we reached out to you, reached out to you know all these people. You were the one that actually came back and said, you know, I really appreciate you reaching out to me. I'm going to decline the offer, but I thought that was that was very uh, classy of you to do that because other people, you know, they'll just ignore you, and then you know, then they'll have a debate with you and and uh, never have read the book and debate you. <laughs> it's, funny, you know, it's funny RD, because tell me if I'm being a, uh, tell me if I'm being a dick or not. Okay. Right. I just heard from somebody writing this TNA book, you know, okay. oh, so someone is writing a TNA book yeah, somebody, and it's bro. Okay. Supposedly it's like supposed to be a big publisher and everything. Okay. And, and bro, they, they reached out to me. Oh, we got Jared and we got Dixie and we got yeah. this one and we got that one. And, 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 and you know, RD, I said, bro, like that was 2002. Right. Like, why do I want to talk about like it was 20 years? Is that like, is this guy hanging up the phone thinking Vince is a dick? Because I sincerely feel that way, bro. That was 20 years ago. Why do we keep doing this? Well, I mean, it's, you know, it's something where there was a lot of, and I hope you don't take offense to this. There was a lot of comedy with 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 TNA. I mean, there were no, and not like written comedy, just like you know, a comedy of errors. Yeah, kind no, of thing. Because things agree. would happen to that company, you would just be like, "How? What? How yeah. on earth did this even happen?" You know, stuff that it would, you know, WCW, you know, would do, and you would just be like, "How did that even happen?" Right. Then you had that with TNA as well. I mean, it was, I, you know, there weren't a ton of people working for that company. You know, it wasn't like you had the the multimedia or, you know, we had a giant uh, group. Uh, so I don't know. I mean, it, it, to me, it would be it. I always like it whenever, obviously, we're talking right now. I always think you have very interesting takes on things. Um, so I think it would be good. <clears throat> you're, you're always worried. I, I know what your concern is. You know, someone's going to take it. They're going to write it and it's going to spin and say, well, Russo said this. But look, I proved it wrong. You know, I totally get that, but I always think, you know, it would probably be interesting. I, I think it would be very interesting. I don't know how you tell the, the story of it, you know. I want me to tell you in a paragraph what happened with TNA. I'll tell you, I'll tell you a paragraph. Mm -hmm. this is, but again. Let me write this down. Brian Alvarez comes in mind, and for whatever reason, like Brian Alvarez will never believe a word I say. I Brian's a good guy. You, yeah, I tell you what, if you and Brian were, if I wait a minute, wait, 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 let me tell you this. Listen to me. Listen to me. Mm -hmm. I had a situation last week, mm -hmm. bro. Somebody kept hitting my YouTube station with copyright check marks, and they were saying they were from F. What is it? F O W. Online.com. There, Brian, I got in a plug for you. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. No, no, I'm going to talk about Brian here. So, so RD, um, they, they're hitting my YouTube and they're 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 copywriting the short little clips that I'm using from castrating the marks. Mm -hmm. now, bro, of course, I you know I I I know how this thing works. I know about fair use, mm -hmm. and I know we're just using those clips to criticize and you know talk about those clips we're not playing episodes of the show to right. we're, we're, we're in our legal lane and using the clips mm -hmm. bro i get an email from the guy who runs Meltz's website mm -hmm. vince it's not us right we don't know who this guy is it's not us mm -hmm. okay and I was so thankful. This guy jumping through hoops. He's writing to YouTube. It's not us. Mm -hmm. Bro, he said to me, Vince, I'm going to ask Brian and Dave to reach out to the person and just say, bro, stop. You're, you're right. not. Gonna and he came back to me. Mm -hmm. and Vince, Brian personally reached out to the person. Didn't say Dave did, but he said Brian did. Right. So, bro. I sit down, I write Brian an email. Brian mm -hmm. doesn't have to do this. Right. I said, Brian, thank you very much. I mm -hmm. know you didn't have to do it. Very appreciative of it. Mm -hmm. I say this, RD, Brian, 
I would love to open up the lines of communication in 2021. Whether it's your show, my show, privately, I would love to open up the lines of communication with you. I think you two should. You, here's what I think should happen. But what do you think the response was? Uh, I don't know what Brian's response was. None. Oh, well. It's like, bro, how can I move? At least say no. Like, how can we move forward if you won't help me? <laughs> here's what should happen. Oh. We, we should have a, since I, I know and I consider myself friends with both of you, I could just, I could just moderate a, uh, a, a, a peace summit. I'd love that. I'm all in. RD, I'm all in. I, I, bro, I would have great shows with these guys. I don't know what they're afraid of. I, 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 we would have great shows. <laughs> would, it would be an interesting show. I'm not, I think it, probably, it would be fascinating. Oh, it would I'm be fascinating. Gonna, like, show. Them on a personal level, the people. I'm not going to. I don't know them to do that. Right. Right. I, I I think they're just missing a great opportunity for some great shows. My platform, their platform, sure. whatever they want to do. I think they're being, bro, I'll be honest with you. I think they're being babies. Like, <laughs> I don't this is business. We're not going to call Brian a baby. This is business, guys. Let's let's make this happen. Bro, I wrote the same thing to Keller. I wrote the same mm -hmm. thing to Meltzer. Nothing. I'm like. I don't understand, bro. What you you were on their show years and years ago, years like ago, twenty bro. some years, years ago. ago. Yes, mm -hmm. sure. I don't know, hey, bro. If you could ever arrange that, I you don't you just tell me when you don't have to. I'm I'm one. I would. I, I make no promises. No, you but. don't have to. But I just want you to know. All right, let's talk about the bread and butter with WrestleCrowd because you mentioned a couple of times this Patreon. I want to hear about this Patreon. Tell me what's going on. Yeah, it's uh, patreon.com slash wrestlecrap. Uh, two bucks a month gets you the RD and Blade exclusive shows. Uh, and then for 10 bucks a month, you get access to the WrestleCrap archives where it has all the old stuff. You know, we've been up for 20 years. I think that currently on the site, it has like the last five years of, of stuff on there. Maybe more. I don't even, I can't even tell anymore. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's just wrestlecrap.com. We always talk about the worst of pro wrestling. We always try and make it funny. Always try and not have it be personal attacks uh, is never, ever our goal. It's always, okay, look at this. Here's what someone, uh, here's something that a wrestling company tried to promote. Uh, they tried to make Mac, uh, Mike Shaw uh, the most disgusting man alive in, uh, you know, as Bastion Booger. Not that Mike Shaw was a disgusting man. Oh, right. They were trying to make him Bastion Booger, comma, the most disgusting man alive. Uh, you know, just trying to have fun with it and, and uh, you know, just look at, at things that never worked out uh, in wrestling the way that uh, people, you know, everybody hoped that it would. Uh, you know, just just have fun with it, make fun of it, uh, laugh about it, um, you know. And then once a year, I had just done this. I always do a, um, oh, we should have led with this, I think. We'll see. Um, I always do a Christmas movie induction that has nothing to do with wrestling. I've done that ever since the site started. Uh, and I reviewed a very Brady Christmas. I saw that. I saw that on the site. Yes, I did. Yes. Yeah. And you, have, you have memories of a very Brady Christmas. You know what? I don't think I've seen it. Really? I don't think I've seen it. So what, what was the review? Thumbs up? No, the review was it was completely uh, ridiculous, and my wife was watching it, and she said, I hate all these people. <laughs> it was, she always liked the Brady Bunch, but they made them very unlikable. You know, I hate to say this, bro, one of my favorite Christmas movies is Jingle All the Way. I love sure. that. I love yeah. that. Did you get, I don't think you gave the Patreon address. Uh, Russell, or excuse me, patreon.com slash Russell Crap. I'm going to give you an offer you can't refuse. Oh, boy. I'm going to see what kind of a friend Brian Alvarez is to the great R.D. Reynolds. Oh, no, don't, don't. I'm going to make, make you an offer you can't refuse. If you were able, ever able to pull this summit together. <laughs> okay. You know where we do this summit exclusively? One place, one place only. Where, where would that be? Patreon.com. <laughs> 
<laughs> that's my offer to you. Wrestle <laughs> Patreon, that's it. No other, on no Russo platform, only on my friend R.D. Reynolds, if you can. Make that. How about that, bro? How about that? <laughs> that that's amazing. I, again, I make no promises. Uh, I mean, right in the God, on your platform, we make that happy. I've never played on a Russo platform. That's oh, how, boy. That's how much I think of this man here. Wow. Well, th- thank you very much for, for your kind offer. Well, R.D., listen, man, I'm great that we have this uh, relationship, bro. We got to do this more often, bro. We, yeah, we, absolutely. We gotta, absolutely. Every time I talk to you, it's fun. And so much we didn't talk about, bro. We could do a whole show on Batman. Bro, I oh, want yeah. real, real quick, real quick. The Joker movie, being a Batman 66 guy through and through, how do you feel about Joaquin Phoenix's Joker? Uh, I I actually like that. I, it was, I, a friend of mine said it best. That was an incredible movie that I never, ever want to see again. That's a good movie. It was so yeah. depressing. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Yeah. Bro, you know what? I watched the first episode of last night, and I like I couldn't. I couldn't sit, sit through. You know how like there are some legendary shows and you've never seen them and like, okay, let me see what everybody's talking about, right? Mm-hmm. I sat down last night to season one, episode one of The Walking Dead. Okay. Have you, have you seen that? No, never seen it. Oh my God. I could not my wheelhouse. Oh my bro, I could I thought I could sit through it so gory and so and I know I'm sitting there. This is just special effects. This is Hollywood, but I, I could not sit through it. I did that with 24. I, first- everybody always talked about how great 24 was. Yeah. I tried, I went through like three episodes and I just gave up. I, it, it just has to be something that appeals to you personally. Uh, and, you know, that just, it, it just didn't. So oh. it's probably the same thing with you and Walking Dead. What's your favorite show on air right now. Favorite show on air right now? Yes. What are you watching? What's the great RD Reynolds watching? AEW? Okay. <laughs> No, I, I watch AEW every week. I actually do a running commentary on my Facebook, the old man social media platform. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, I just got done watching uh, the, the getting caught up on the Mandalorian because I'm a big Star Wars fan. So yeah, yeah. My yeah. wife and my son just think Baby Yoda is like all that. I heard, really they had a great, I heard they had a great payoff finish. Really uh, paid it off well. Yeah, it was, it was really really good. I don't want to spoil it for anybody, but. Yeah. Yeah. All right, everybody, the great uh, R.D. Reynolds. So it's WrestleCrap.com, Patreon.com slash WrestleCrap. WrestleCrap, that's it. Guys, check out R.D. Reynolds, man. This is, uh, you want some humor with wrestling. You want to have some fun, man. Check out WrestleCrap. It's a staple in the industry. It'll be around forever. The final days, bro, we're going to have cockroaches and wrestle crap <laughs> and Vince Russo and maybe share maybe share might still be around we'll see hopefully Charo yes hopefully Charo yes, yes. everybody the great great RD Reynolds RD thank you so much man thank you okay